even though you grew up in a single parent home, you feel like you was fortunate enough to be raised with a certain amount of morals and opportunity. Yeah, and with love. Yeah. See, yeah. see that, see that's the difference, homie. It's a lot of niggas didn't come from love. It's a lot of black children was born into some situations and circumstances and some conditions, and it was absent of love. They weren't. They didn't. They wasn't nurtured. Yeah. Them niggas just was. Uh, they just was fed. Think about what I'm saying. They wasn't. They wasn't nurtured. They just was fed and clothed and given shelter. Wherever you sleep in the house, you just sleep as long as you got a roof over your head. So a lot of children came out of those conditions and became some of the best drug dealers you can find in the neighborhood. They swear they wasn't gonna never be broke and be hungry again. It's a lot of white people, a lot of all kind of people. We ain't like talking that. about them. I feel yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to stick with us though. Cause, yeah, we got to <laughs> stick with us. Uh, cause they go take care of theirs. You see what I'm saying? Uh, one of them go have an insurance policy that they just gotta wait for the right family member to die that's gonna leave them something. So, by me growing up in this environment, the people who didn't have what I have, I, I felt. I felt less than when I ran around these people who didn't, who who came from less than, than homes than I did, right? So I tried to fit in with them. Uh, we didn't bring them to our communities and try to get them to live and, 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 and be exposed to the life uh, uh, that we did. My mother did that. You do what is called dumbing it down. Yeah. So when I got to school, homie, uh, I played stupid. Uh, to fit in with black kids. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I, 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 I mispronounce words. Uh, Cause we tease one another, right? Uh, for being a nerd. Uh, so that's just the culture. So my mother is instilling these good things in me, but I got an uncle who pimp. I got another uncle who can't stay out of jail. So all the men in the family is going to prison, going to jail, getting out of prison, selling dope. And we seeing this, right? Uh, we tend to mimic the culture. And, and, and what I say by mimic the culture, uh, culture is is can be and sometimes is more powerful and, and, and influential uh, than your upbringing. Culture is everything. Yeah. Culture culture is the soil of success. Yeah. So so our culture, uh, what we embrace, what we propagate, uh, what we share and, and entertain with our children, what we dance to what we sing to, uh, what we make love to, all of it's negative. A lot of what I've been watching from you on your YouTube series speaks on the, not only that and other things you were saying a second ago. But before I go there, I want to say this. I want to ask you this. In listening to what you were just saying, okay. did you ever feel a connection with the hood? Uh, yeah, homie. Uh, nigga, I grew up in Stop 6, nigga. Uh, hmm. uh. Everybody know Charleston Blue uh, from that era in the projects. Uh, nigga, I know Dabo Kenny. Uh, nigga, we live uh, uh, on Elden and Grieg. So uh, when I put I, when I put my eye out uh, when we was living on Grieg, homie, uh, all the kids in the neighborhood came to see me in the living room. Yeah. So uh, I, I, I look. I, hold I, on. Let me let, let me finish. So. Yeah. So from there we go to Poly. Uh, nigga play run track and play football with the Golden Knights. All big name niggas know about the Golden Knights. So uh, my my connection is has never been to the hood. My connection has always been to my mother. And so the people around. Me. Yeah, wherever mama take me, that's what I'm connected to. So it wasn't the hood. Uh, and that was that's most children. Most children. Because they just, they mother moved over here. This is why they're that. Mm -hmm. They didn't choose this. They mama just happened to move over here because she couldn't afford to live nowhere. My mother could afford uh, to live other places. And so, I, man, I can't connect with the hood. I can't understand. But when I went to the hood, uh, hey, man, them cricket boys, them richy rich. I knew I was better than them people. I knew I was cleaner than them people. I knew I lived better than them, and so there was there was some sort of an arrogance to that. Nigga, you better not make me mad. Oh yeah, so it was an arrogance to that. Uh, but I went over there to go fit in. I didn't go over there to stay clean. I wanted to go over there and be dirty and play like I was a, a, a you know. So when I come back to the suburbs, 
Nigga, everything that I learned over the, over my ain't in them house, nigga, I'm bringing it to the suburb. Right. So, uh, children mimic what they see and, and, and repeat what they hear. And nigga, I was a parrot mm. and a sponge. For sure. And then when I, I asked you about connecting to the hood, because a lot of your commentary I watch from you, it always, community is a big thing. Yeah. And I always associate the hood with community. But then it's always from a perspective of like, I'm connected, but I'm on the outside looking in. Fuck the hood. I'm on the outside looking in, nigga. For sure. Yeah, this, and this is what I say about the hood, homie. Uh, until we can put the neighbor back on the hood, nigga, we going back in slavery. Nobody wants to be with her. Nobody want to live next to her. Nobody want to live next to us, homie. So now we used to have neighborhoods. Neighborhoods are communities. There's no community in no hood. Right. You can't go borrow no sugar from no nigga next door no more. No, for real. I hear you. I hear yeah, you. so uh, why I'm going to embrace the hood? When the hood, man, look how many niggas the hood done killed, sent to the penitentiary, turned niggas sisters out. The hood. And all the people that love the hood, all the people that throw up the hood and embrace the hood and celebrate the hood, they don't give back to the hood. All they do is take from the hood. Every nigga hollering hood take from the hood. But the folks who had a neighborhood, them folks gave back to their neighborhood and took care of their neighborhood. So we got to figure out some kind of way to put the neighbor back on the hood and go back to borrowing sugar from one another, uh, helping each other with the kids, disciplining each other kids without abusing and beating them, holding each other accountable. Cutting an old woman grass who can't get her grass cut. So, no, nah, I'm, I'm against the hood. And you, everything the hood stands for. Do you regret embracing the hood when you was younger? When uh, you, when I you ain't never it? embraced it. I ain't. See, you, 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 you talking about a kid, homie. When I grew up in the hood, it wasn't, a, wasn't no hood in the 80s. Right, right. Nigga, I'm a, I was born in 1977. I was born in 1977. It wasn't no hood in... 81, 82, 83, 80. Did the hoods didn't come to the 90s. I was already gone on a murder case. Hmm. See what I'm saying? Wasn't no hoods, huh? We hmm. played outside. Nigga, we was seven, eight years old. We could get a bus and stop six and be at the Tandy Center downtown, be at Town Center, be all over this city as children. So, uh, it wasn't no hood. We had the Golden Knights. Nigga, we all played football and track and, and sold candy together. So it wasn't no gangs. It wasn't no hood in the 80s. It was communities and neighborhoods, homie. We didn't know no violence. So what do you think brought that change? The main thing? Gang banging. Rap music. Gangsta rap. Do you think gang banging first or rap first? Gang, gang banging came before gangster rap. And then the rap perpetuated it. It's and solidified it. Yeah. Okay. Prop, prop, just the propaganda, the fuel to it. But you got to think, homie. Uh, even <laughs> first crack came, right? Mm -hmm. Crack, man, it, it done a number on us. Not on only the world? men on the world, on black yeah. community. Yeah. By the time we got to Fort Worth, it was already in California, Houston, and a whole bunch of other places. Mm -hmm. So, it wasn't no hood when I was coming up. So, it, it, it wasn't men, men, nigga, we was children who played, and we was kids. So, most of us, unless we was born, unless we was in abusive situations, in se severe, neglectful families, uh, growing up hungry, being molested, Man, we didn't have no concept of what was going on around us right. because they didn't expose children to things. Y'all get y'all, children couldn't, man, nah, -uh, we couldn't go out and see what was going on. That came later. So I'm growing up looking at everything from afar, television, and then noticing as a kid when niggas come home from prison, welcome home prison parties. Compared to high school parties. Well, now I'm, I'm adolescent. So, uh, when I'm starting to become aware of what crack cocaine was, that wasn't in there. I ain't learned that at home. Learned Nigga, I was school. in school through the D.A.R.E. program, television. There ain't no no den. Okay, well, we heard grandma on it. Okay, well, we heard A and B on it. Right. Well, what do we, we ain't know what no crack fiend look like. 
Nigga Dolphin used to be beautiful and fine models when crack furs hit. Dolphin then become what the stereotypical Dolphin looked like to almost five years later. Right. It was an end thing to smoke crack. When we as kids became what crack was, just like it's an end thing to pop Percocets, it's an end thing to pop uh, Sip Sir, them the new crackheads. Them the new crackheads of their generation. So, the people who were smoking crack, it was a party thing, nigga. It wasn't no shameful thing. It wasn't until motherfuckers started having to sell pussy and look bad and look like smoking. It. But at first, as kids, it was a party thing. We didn't know who was who. Everybody, mamas and uncles and daddies, was smoking crack. Snorting cocaine, free basin. People was getting rich too off selling it too though. Man, millionaires. Mm -hmm. We had just come out of slavery. Nigga, it wasn't nothing that gave niggas no money like that other than heroin and crack. We are just 60s. Nigga, heroin come right after, right after we come out the civil rights. Civil rights. We get heroin, nigga. Yeah. Frank Lucas and them. Nicky Bournes. Yeah. They put the smack down. <laughs> That's grandmama them generation. Them 1940s, 1930s. It's grandmama them. Then, nigga, here come cocaine. Then, here come crack. Then, here come gang banging. Then, here come gangster rap. Yeah. Well, how you told me, just a moment ago, you told me how you was first influenced because you seen it on the TV and it made you. I, I think about that and I look at how much the influence is heavy with children today with the internet. It's like they can't even get away. You can't even hide it now. Well, it's our fault. It's the parents' fault. Yeah. Nigga, you ain't free to play no rap music in my mama house. Back then and now, you ain't for the play. So, the parents don't guard the children's ears. The parents don't protect what the children see. The parents don't monitor what the children speak. So, who fault is it? Yeah. She, a nigga, oh, my mama had to work, so she couldn't monitor that. And what nobody in the family, what nobody in the community coming to help her. Single mothers didn't have no help back in them days. It was no such thing as a help for a single mother. It wasn't no programs. It wasn't nothing. You feel like it's becoming normalized within the black community to be... It's just normalized to accept the, the negativity that comes with rap music. Uh, well... And the culture and shit. It, 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 it's normalized because uh, we ride to school uh, letting our kids listen to it. Right? Uh, the content of rap music is not for children. Not, nigga, minus the lyrics. The content is not for children. But yeah, you can't hide it nowadays, bro. You can't hide it. Don't play it in the car. Don't give your child no phone at five years old. You can't hide it, man. You can't control it. Shit, fuck you talking about you, man. I run what's in whatever house. So See, most people mean? ain't thinking like that though. Man, you well, That's you well. Here's the thing, you like it too. You like it too. My mama and them say, "Hey, all y'all kids get out of here. Why you grown folks in here?" We start letting the kids sit around us. The kids like the music because we like the music. If we let if we if we give them bow wow kind of rappers. Uh, crisscross kind of rappers when they four five years old and they don't never get appealed to what we listen to. Nigga, my son like gangster rap because he heard it from baby to now. I didn't feel to the lyrics, homie. I didn't feel to the content. Man, I put my daughter in the car just yesterday, man. Me and her ain't rolled together in a minute. Nigga, fuck a lot of bitches. Hey, man, goddamn, I was heavy up and cut it off. Put on another song, bitch. God damn, man. I can't listen to nothing. But <laughs> say, man. Golly, man. Yeah. But even just the, not just the music, just the culture, the way media work, it's out there. And I just feel like, not even just black people, people are, it's like, what do you call it, desensitized to just, it's out there. Well, like, nobody else is making rap but black children. That's true. Nobody else. So we just can't say it's just not black people. That's it true. is just black people. That's a good point. The music is... It good. is just black people, homie. It's very important. And, 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 and it's not the media. It's the home. You know how many women I see turn around and pop their ass? And it would be a house full of women popping their ass and they hollering, Hey! 
and them kids standing over there looking mm. at the family reunion. So it ain't no more black women just two step. Every time the black women do something now with some music, she got to turn and turn that ass. Mm-hmm. Bitch, so so it's almost like she's psychological. Every when you in Miami, you walking up down Ocean Drive, you gonna hear some hey, and when you look over. It's a bunch of black women. They got their hand on the ground. They got their ass in the air. They bellies hanging up under their shirt. But they got them asses flopping and showing. So that's that's what we done been reduced down to. So then when you look at the nigga, he walking down the street. He got his ass showing. His dick print showing. His pants around his, his, his ankles. Man, it, man, we look disgusting. So it is just us, man. It is. It's people coming over here who can't speak English and learning how to read by the time they get to the sixth grade, fifth grade, read English and speak English. We over here and our kids can't even read, homie. When you look at the school reading scores, and man, most of the black children when they get to school, they don't know nothing when they get to pre K and kindergarten. But how to fight? Fight hard on the motherfucker, little bitty baby. <laughs> So now, nigga, it is just us, man. We fucked up, nigga.